Hi everyone, in this article we're going to talk about ignition timing tuning modes that you can select in the Adaptronic Modular ECUs. So this article explains the different load axes for ignition timing and also temperature corrections for ignition timing. Now similarly to fuel mapping, the Adaptronic Modular ECUs can use a combination of MAP or TPS to control the ignition timing. The ideal measurement would really be a, a measurement of the pressure inside the, the chamber which would really be something like MAP times VE but that has the downside that as you change the fuel MAP it's actually changing the ignition MAP at the same time which would make tuning a bit difficult and you know, a bit confusing for a lot of tuners so we don't offer that. Of course if the EC doesn't do what the tuner expects it to do then ultimately the tuner can't use it to do what it needs to do to set fire to the mixture at the right time. The load axes are set in the settings for the ignition map so if you've got a dual map mode you'll have one for ignition map 1 and another one for ignition map 2. Now the most basic tuning mode that most of you will be familiar with is map. Now that's a pretty good correlation with the pressure of the air in the cylinder and therefore how fast the flame front actually propagates through the engine and basically that's what you need to compensate for when you're tuning ignition timing. So this is one that we recommend most of the time. Now if you don't have a map measurement at all then you'll need to use throttle position instead. Now this doesn't correlate all that well with pressure in the cylinder because at low throttle openings at low RPM you may actually be up to the full load of the engine already because the airspeed through the throttle is so slow. So actually tuning a TPS ignition map will take longer than tuning a map based ignition map. Now pressure ratio, so I map divided by E map, is actually a really bad idea for tuning ignition timing. Um, if it's not obvious to you then I'll leave that as an exercise for you to work out why that would be. Now we also offer MGP, so manifold gauge pressure as a measurement axis. Now I don't personally think this is a good idea because it's actually absolute pressure that affects how fast the flame propagates through the cylinder, not the pressure relative to the outside air which is closed off anyway at the time. Now because I'm a bit of a space nerd, I'm going to talk about the Apollo 1 fire and there's also a similar event that happened in the USSR which wasn't made public until about 30 years later after the, um, yeah, the Iron Curtain fell. Now part of the problem uh, with the Apollo 1 fire and why it was so ferocious was because it was a pure oxygen environment in the capsule but it was designed to be a pure oxygen environment. The reason why the fire was so bad was because apart from the fact there was pure oxygen inside they were simulating at elevated pressure you know to make the door seal and all that sort of thing so they're actually pressurized the internal capsule to 16.5 psi I think it was. Now at 5 psi which was the design pressure which was what would have been in space you know with a vacuum on the outside then the fire wouldn't have spread nearly as quickly as it did with triple the oxygen pressure inside. But we've been asked to put in because some tuners tune off gauge pressure so it's there but it's not right. Now on individual throttle body turbocharged cars, often MAP alone doesn't tell the full story of how well the engine is breathing. That's why for fuel tuning we have a combined MAP TPS tune option. Now on those cars it's possible to improve the drivability uh, by selecting a MAP plus TPS ignition tune, perform the full MAP tune while leaving the TPS um, ignition MAP to zero and then adding some positive values in the TPS MAP at light throttle to increase engine torque. Now I can't think of a rational reason why someone would want to multiply MAP and TPS maps as on the fuel system where there is a logical physical reason why you would do that but the option is also there for people that want to do that for whatever reason and again this can be map or manifold gauge pressure although again manifold gauge pressure is going to be even less relevant. Now in addition to the basic ignition map you can if you want add in a correction for either air or coolant temperature. Normally the engine would be tuned with these at zero and safety functions can be added in. For example putting negative values at high coolant or high air temperatures. Now what I'll ask is please don't tune the engine with these negative values in the maps because what can sometimes happen is when you're on a dyno and there's heat soak happening you can be in these negative areas of the map and your main ignition map ends up being too far advanced. So then if your customer goes and then takes it out and drives it without all the heat soak that happens on the dyno the map can be too advanced and you can actually ping the engine to death that way. So it's a bit of a trap for young players but there you go. Now finally setting up closed loop ignition control and knock detection will be a separate article. Thank you very much.